And welcome back to Archives of Fabella Daily, the only podcast of its kind telling wizards to throw away that want and run. Today is April 12th, equal to Aries 23rd. Books are available on Amazon. Please rate and review the podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And hit that subscribe button for more great stories right in your feed. A while back, Gatorade aired this commercial with Mia Hamm and Michael Jordan trying to one-up each other at various sports to the tune of anything you can do from any Get Your Gun. That was the inspiration for this episode. If you enjoyed my Aries 9th podcast on loose ball, you're going to love this episode because I've got more sports for you! April 12th, 1606 was the date Great Britain's Union Jack flag was adopted as the flag for English and Scottish ships. In Fabella, a new sport debuted as the ultimate test of endurance. I'm Dylan Foley, and this is Archives of Fabella. Beyond our world, there is love. Beyond our world, there is war. Beyond our world, there is life. Beyond our world, there is Fabella. Aries 23rd, 5606 FY, Fabella year, equal to April 12th. 1606, Earth Year. It's 5606 in Camelot, Avalon. Camelot, former home of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, is the seat of power in the Age of Revolution. Airships are connecting people from all over the world. With this added link around the world comes heightened competition. Prince Lionel Pendragon, a descendant of King Arthur, is the most competitive royal of them all. Overconfident and headstrong, Lionel Pendragon isn't happy unless he's the best at everything. There's only one thing that Pendragon has ever failed at. Magic. As a Sadru, Pendragon is desperate to prove that non-magic people are just as capable as a witch or wizard. This weakness gnaws at Pendragon. He becomes obsessed with proving that he's the top athlete. He gathers 24 of the top able-bodied male athletes in Avalon from all walks of life to participate in a simple balance beam event. Pendragon has everyone stand on a wooden beam for as long as they can. No magic is allowed. All the other athletes of the competition fall off the beam, except for Pendragon and an elven wizard named Felix Tamblin. Felix Tamblin is new to Camelot. So new, in fact, that Pendragon can't remember ever seeing the fresh-faced young wizard in his kingdom. Pendragon is so distracted by Felix that he falls off the balance beam. Felix wins the competition. Not wanting to be a laughingstock, Pendragon announces another test of skill. He wishes to have the 24 competitors pass a golden dragon egg back and forth to each other. Whoever holds the egg when the dragon hatches loses. Pendragon calls this event bat back. Here, Pendragon is victorious against Felix Tamblin and claims a title as the best athlete in Camelot. But Felix and the other competitors cry foul. Because Felix won at the balance beam event, Pendragon can't claim success until he wins one more event. Pendragon scrambles to think of something and settles for an event he calls the swing jump. Like kids in a playground, each of the athletes board a swing and launch themselves across a sand pit. 
Pendragon recruits the Knights of the Round Table to serve as unbiased judges for the event. The Valiant Knights show their trustworthiness by awarding Felix Tamblin the win at the swing jump. Even though Felix has won two events out of three, Pendragon states that his competition isn't over. One more day of three events is scheduled to take place. And so, the following morning, Pendragon has a warlock from the Avalon military create balls of energy that the athletes then pass to each other. What develops is a sport called whoosh ball. Played somewhat like dodgeball, all athletes assemble in a circle to pass the ball of magical energy to their rivals. Anyone who gets tagged or misses a catch is out. Pendragon wins. The next event is Blind Tap. Designed to test an athlete's perception without their eyesight, this sees two athletes square off against each other in a circle. A blinding jinx is cast over the competitors, so they can't see their rival. The object of the game is to hit your opponent with a long wooden pole. Again, no magic is allowed. Pendragon wins the Blind Tap, putting him in the lead over Felix. But there was still one more event in the day left to play. Eager to end the competition, Pendragon has each athlete select a vase from the royal palace and place it on a pedestal. He calls this event the Idol Toss. Using a set of clay discs, the competitors take turns throwing the discs like frisbees to knock an opponent's vase off the pedestal. If the vase shatters, you're out. Pendragon's wins make him a target from the word go. He's one of the first athletes knocked out of the event, allowing Felix Tamblin to once again secure a win. With Felix Tamblin and Prince Pendragon tied after the end of the second day of competition, Pendragon schedules a third day of competition. All the wizards in their group are upset they didn't get to show off their magical powers and threaten to quit. In order to appease them, Pendragon announces that the first event of the third day of competition will be a simple shooting drill. Wizards are able to use magic to hit their targets from about a hundred yards back. Because Pendragon can't do magic, he and other sad ruse in the group use arrows to shoot at targets. Felix bests Pendragon again in this event. Unable to think of another event, Pendragon announces that the next test of skill will be an evaluation of each of the competitor's special talent. The freestyle event sees each of the athletes showcasing their talents in front of the Knights of the Round Table as judges. Pendragon elects to perform an amazing juggling routine with flaming torches. Felix performs a series of magic tricks. Pendragon's dazzling routine and his connections with the Knights of the Round Table help him come away with a win. Ready to secure a win over the entire competition, Pendragon has everyone line up for a 1200 meter dash. Fastest athlete wins. It's a simple idea. But the race ends not with Felix or Pendragon crossing the finish line, but with one of the other competitors that has lagged behind throughout the entire competition. They have to compete for a fourth day. Since this is a competition about physical and mental prowess, Pendragon has everyone compete in an obstacle course. He sends his rivals up and over walls, crawling under nets, and racing over hot coals. A slide puzzle at the end completes the course. The athlete with the fastest time wins, and that winds up being Pendragon, who designed the course specifically to give him the edge. One thing Pendragon can't engineer to give himself victory is a broomstick race. All 24 competitors board their flying broomsticks and take off through the air at blazing speeds. Pendragon cuts corners at every turn, but he's still not able to secure a victory over Felix Tamblin. It's down to the final event, a dive off the largest rock in Camelot into the murky lake. The competitors have to dive through three rotating rings and are once again judged by the Knights of the Round Table. After a grueling four days of competition, everyone is exhausted. Pendragon somehow manages to dive through two rings, 
it takes him three tries to accomplish this feat, and might have taken more if he didn't find his third dive satisfactory. When it is Felix Tamblin's turn, the elf is only able to make it through one ring of three attempts. On the third attempt, Felix later writes that an inadvertent intake of water snuck down their throat. When Felix emerges from the water, it becomes clear that Felix is actually Felicia. Felicia Tamblin is an elven witch who disguised herself as a male in order to compete in the competition. She uses a potion called Mutroma Milk to accomplish the transformation. One of the key drawbacks of this potion is that any intake of food or water would counteract the potion's effects. When Felicia accidentally swallowed fresh lake water during her third dive, her true, beautiful self was laid bare to all the competitors assembled. Pendragon finally claims victory in the competition because he had the better dive, and Felicia Tamblin was disqualified for falsely portraying herself as a male. Felicia Tamblin, however, has the last laugh, for Prince Pendragon may have won the competition, but Felicia Tamblin is the one who keeps it going. Year after year, she organizes what she calls a dodecathlon, modeled after the four-day event Pendragon designed. The dodecathlon has a series of 12 events spaced over four days and are as follows. Event number one, balance beaming, during which competitors attempt to balance on a wooden beam that magically erodes under their feet, making it harder to remain upright. Event number two, bat back. Competitors pass a golden dragon egg to each other using rackets. The game is highly reminiscent of badminton. Players keep passing the egg over the net until the egg bursts. If it bursts on your side, you're out. Event number three, Swing Jump, an unusual upgrade from the long jump in which players board a swing and are judged by how well they leap off. Points are deducted for not sticking the landing and not achieving an impressive distance. Event number four, Whoosh Ball. All competitors stand in a circle, passing a sizzling ball of magical energy between them, using a set of special gauntlets designed to repel magic. More than one ball can be in circulation at a time. If you get tagged with a ball, you're eliminated. Event number five, Blind Tap. Two players enter a ring, blinded by a jinx. The object of the game is to tag your opponent with a six-foot wooden pole. A hard hit is unnecessary. A light tap is all you need to claim victory. Event number six, the idle toss. All competitors are allowed to place vases they've designed on pedestals. Players then take turns using clay discs and magic to knock vases of their rivals off. If your vase shatters, you are eliminated from the event. Last player standing wins. Event number seven, ring shot. Magicians are tasked to use magic to discharge spells at a set of rotating rings placed a hundred yards away. Non-magical Sadru competitors used arrows and later guns to hit their rotating targets. Event number eight, the freestyle event. This was a spot for the competitors to do whatever they wished to impress the judges. Whoever has the highest score wins. Event number nine, the 1200 meter dash. A standard track race of 1200 meters, first one across the finish line, wins. Event number 10, the obstacle course. An ever-changing set of tasks to test a player's agility and mental ability to solve puzzles, trapeze, slide puzzles, and leaping over hot coals are used the most. Event number 11, the broomstick race. A race throughout a course on flying broomsticks. These are later replaced by speeders, but the goal is the same. Be the first to cross the finish line and claim victory. Event number 12, ring dive. Players are tasked with diving through three sets of rings conjured by magic. Judges award points for passing through the most rings and how well the dive is executed. 
Prince Pendragon eventually fades into obscurity, but Felicia Tamblin attains great renown as the mother of the Dodecathlon. For more on the Dodecathlon, see the next novel coming from Archives of Fabella, titled The Paragon Tournament. That's going to do it for us today. Tune in tomorrow for the story of how Wardens recruited some very wild new partners. Subscribe now to get more new episodes right in your feed. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Send your questions to archivesofabella at gmail.com. Archives of Fabella is created, produced, and hosted by Dylan Foley, with music by Garrett Ferris and audio blocks. Books are available on Amazon, in ebook and paperback. As always, look outside of what is possible and think about what might be.